Welcome once again to yet another financial reporting session. As we promised uh, yesterday that today we're gonna do two questions. One from financial reporting that is a CA 2.1, DA D8, SEC F7, and uh, we're also going to do one question from advanced financial reporting that is a CA 3.1 and SEC SBR. But I want to mention that uh, the reason why we are doing this question today is because um, of a request from one student yesterday. So there was a student yesterday who, 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 who commented on our post and they requested that uh, we do a question for him. So we want to grant our dear student the request. So there we go. That's our Facebook page right there. And that's the name of the student. Yes, Robert Bruce Ngoma. He commented on our post and he said he needed to know the comprehensive income uh, statement, financial reporting, and we didn't, it wasn't, so we asked him to say, please make sure to give clear answers in the exam, not like the way you have responded here. The examiner has got no time to start guessing what you mean. So Robert was able to clarify and he said the question where we need to prepare the income statement the changes in equity and the balance sheet. And last in our comment down here, you see we answered him and we said much better. We will do a full published accounts question that will have all three elements and your name shall be tagged. So yes, Robert Bruce Ngoma will fulfill our promise to you. And uh, we are happy to tell you that uh, the promise we made two days ago uh, is now being fulfilled today. So we hope that you're going to watch this video and know how to do a statement of changes in equity. So please, if you're a student, feel free. That was the post where Robert commented. We posted a post saying a month or less is probably enough for somebody or for someone determined to make it in the forthcoming exams. Go ask for advice. So Robert asked for help. So there we go, Robert Bruce Ngurube, and we are going to tag your name in this question as we finish solving it. Thank you so much for that, Robert. And uh, there we go. So, okay. So now, let's go back to let's go back to our question. Since you wanted the statement of changes in equity, uh, you also wanted the SFP and income statement. There we go. Okay. Boom. So going by what Robert going by what Robert said. It is only clear here that um, we are going to do a published accounts question because it's the only question anyway that has got all those three components. So this is a Zika exam, financial reporting, Monday, June 20, 2016. It was a June exam, 2016. So if you don't, if you want to follow through, just go and get your paper, June 2016. So there we go published accounts question and we go right away into question number two. Yes, that's our guy, Malao POC. Okay, it's a very nice question, uh, especially that's dedicated to Brucey, Bruce Singoma. We are happy to dedicate uh, these workings to you. So if you are a student and you're watching, please feel free to text us your area of concern or just comment on, on, on any of our posts and tell us what you want us to help you with. We'll be happy to help you. So first things first, yes, Bruce requested for income statements, changes in equity and financial position. We have all the three. Financial position there as Bruce requested, changes in equity as he requested, and then profit or loss as he requested. So because I'm such a good man, I've decided to also give him a bonus statement of changes or oh, other compressive income. Oh yeah, other compressive income. So Bruce, there comes your bonus. Yes, other compressive income. So we hope you are watching and uh, many people are going to watch and uh, be able to benefit from your request. We thank you so much for following our page. Okay, so first things first, in every exam, requirement is important. So now we know what we are looking for as dictated by 
Robert Bruce Ngoma. So there we go, we're looking for profit or loss, other components of income, changes in equity, and financial position. Now, I want to mention one thing here. Let's make one thing straight. I always tell my students to always go with the Lusambo way. The Lusambo way is the free way. Please, in every exam, always go with the Lusambo way. The free way. Pick up all the free marks as you can. So let's pick up our marks before going on. You know, when you're dealing with um, published accounts, it is always important to post the free marks first. Before you go to any note in any adjustment, just go to, to the SFP income statement to change in equity and make them. Make them. But no, before you do that, I want to show you something you should look for. You should look out for before you go anywhere. Look out for the date of the trial balance. See, the trial balance is 31st May 2015. So also check out the reporting date. This is going to help you to identify which ones are free marks and which ones are not free marks. So let's go. Look at our reporting date, 31st May 2015. Yes. 31st May 2015. Yes. There we go. 31st May 2015. So indeed, once we know the trial balance date is the same as the reporting date, which means that most of the figures are going to be free marks. That is the beauty of knowing the principles. Once you know the principles, published accounts could be a baby in the exam. It is actually my favorite published accounts, one of my favorites, because it is so easy to understand. So there we go. So let's post our free marks. How do you know the free marks? First things first, simply make the income statement, and then we can go to, we can now move on to the SFP changes in equity. Make the formats first before you confuse yourself. This exam is about having a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, it is very difficult for you to pass questions like this one. So let's use our strategy simply to quickly make our trial balance, our, um, our, our financial statements, make the formats. So how do we do it? We check out what is here. Simply go through, see? There's duration reserve, share premium, loan notes, interest, blah, blah, blah. And no, the format doesn't change, yeah? it's just the same. So let's go, let's make it. What else do we have here before you go? Okay, we've got revenue, distribution, admin, anything else, okay. There's nothing new. So it is the, the usual stuff that we have. Don't go to the notes, just quickly make the format and post the free marks. So let's go. Okay, I'm going to be a bit faster because um, I'm sensing danger. My battery is a bit low for the laptop and there's no power where I am, unfortunately. Okay, so there we go. We are going to make the format. First things first, we are going to make the statement of profit or loss. Now remember, we are dealing with uh, this gentleman called Malau PLC. Malau PLC. So in the exam, write in full, Malau PLC statement of profit or loss. For the year ended, bra bra bra, bra bra bra. So in this case, we're saying for the year ended 31st May 2015. You see that? You write that one in full in the exam, you get one free mark for just writing that. So don't lose any mark for nothing. Please, 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 please write in full. So there we go with our format. So our format, I'm going to just use this. Uh, I'll, I'll be very, very fast. We have uh, the revenues. Of course, we know there's quacha there. So we've got uh, revenue. We've got cost of sales. We've got uh, gross profits. And then what do we have next? Remember, usually I love leaving a line here and I call it other income. Just in case, in case there's something in the note you can come and throw it here. Other income, then uh, what else do we have? We are going to have admin. And I suggest you put, the, you put them the way they've got distribution, and then we've got admin, yes. And then uh, what else do we have? We have, um, you know, the finance cost, they always, they go. This is the way the, the format is anyway. 
And then after the finance course, you know there's what you call profit before tax. Profit before tax. So what is next? We remove the tax. Okay, that's our tax. And then we are going to have our profit for the period, which is simply our net profit. Okay, now remember those other comprehensive income. So what do we do? We bring in our other comprehensive income right there. Maybe let's even add some life. Let's give it red. Other comprehensive income. Okay, there we go. So what do we do next? We are simply going to post our three figures here. And then our next format is called to changes in equity. Changes in equity, what is our changes in equity? What do we do? We simply bring the equity. It never changes. The changes in equity never changes. It is always the same. What do you do? You simply bring in the share capital. So I think for also, Malao uh, PLC statement of changes in equity. You write in full for the NDG, blah, 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 blah. You write in full, you get another one mark. So they are always three marks in this exam. So what do you do? This one is one of the easy bits you are able to maximize max here. You simply write the share capital here. It never changes, it's always the same. You have the share capital, you have your share premium, never changes. Then you have your retained earnings, it's always the same. It never changes. Then you've got your devaluation surplus. Never changes. And then what else do you have? Yes, you are going to have your total right here. This format never changes. So what do you do as usual? Simply bring in the opening balances. It never changes. Opening balance. There you go. Since these are shares, well, did they issue any shares? So you bring in the additions. Addition during the year, okay. What else can you bring in? As you know, you have to, 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 to find out whether they, whether they paid any dividends. Dividends paid, simply put them here. And then what do you do? You're going to bring what you're going to call other comprehensive income or even the net profit itself. Bring in the net profit. Now, you can either choose to bring what you're going to call total, comprehensive income which is net profit plus other comprehensive income you have the total comprehensive income or if you want you can simply bring the net profit alone as a line and other comprehensive income alone then you add them from here but to avoid wasting time i've decided to just combine them and then bring them as total comprehensive income okay apart from that what else can you bring here you know uh you simply now bring in the closing balances okay the closing balances. It is such an easy statement, statement of changes in equity. So we hope that our friend, Robert, is, uh, is watching and uh, he's gonna be able to benefit from here. So remember, the closing balances are always free marks if the date of the trial balance is the same as the date of report, which means you simply come and slot them in the way they've been given to you. So let's get those free marks and post them here the way they are. Okay, the next thing you're going to do, boom, go to the statement of financial position. Make the format. And you know, you also write the, uh, the name of, of this guy in full. What do you do? You simply write Malau PLC statement of financial position for the year ended, blah, 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 blah. So you are dealing with the first match, the first, uh, the first May. And then 2015. You write that one in full, you get another one mark. So for writing the titles in the exam, you've got three marks. You see? That's how easy it is. And I want to assure you that please, 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 if you're having any challenges with published accounts, feel free to come to us. We will help you pass. That's our job, is to make things easier. So what do we do? We have assets. SFP, we have assets. Okay, now under these assets, we have what we call non current assets. So, under non current assets, what comes down here is, is PPE, property, plant, and equipment. Remember, in financial accounting, 
we used to bring a, a bunch of things here machinery vehicle a plant land you now in financial reporting now this is a, a bit advanced what do we do simply bring pp as a single ent ent entry there what else do we bring on the format there remember we're simply doing the format it is a common way of being uh, uh, published accounts it is not something new to be honest so apart from ppe there what else do we bring in we bring in other what non other current assets so you can leave a line here but because i'm sure i'm not going to leave a line so if you're not showing the exam leave a line and then bring current assets things don't change you have inventories you have receivables you've got a bank and then you've got cash you see i'm just putting them i don't know what's there but i'm putting them if there's nothing in the notes i'll simply come and leave blanks 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 because these things must be there that's how you show the examiner that you know what you are actually dealing with next what do you do you come to the equity section now remember we have our equity so there we have our non-current our current assets and then we have our non-current uh, assets let me just change the color then we have our equity there okay so there we go we have our equity now apart from our equity what else do we have on our equity on our equity now this is why if you fail statement of changes in equity you should be disappointed because the examiner is simply telling you here that please see these 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 items here the examiner is asking you that please now you've written them what do you with this horizontally okay now we're asking you please write them in vertical write them in vertical please we give you another five marks it's the same thing they're asking you here so simply copy these same things here and now put them in vertical okay there we go so let's now do that so what do we do there we go there we go okay so we come we have the same things there share capital you see we have our share premium we have our retained earnings we have our review surplus yes the exact same things you copy them here and now remember what the point that 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 that, that i told you earlier when it's come to free marks so let me just make a line here so that the other line can be for liabilities and non current liabilities so there we go we have now another another item uh, non current liabilities what comes here you know in, in that question there was uh, something called the a loan note simply bring that loan note the 15 percent loan note 15 percent loan note it comes there then here if you if you check in the question there let me just show you something the trial balance so that you see what what's going on here what's going on in the trial balance is that um we have something what we have is here see we have a loan note here that one goes there and then what else do we have yes we have a uh, deferred tax you see that deferred tax deferred tax goes at non kinds of liabilities okay current liabilities we've got payables we've got bank now see where the bank is the bank is an overdraft you see that it's on the credit side so that's an overdraft so we've got the bank overdraft under current liabilities and then we have um of course there's always interest under current liabilities accrued interest it is always there how do i know because from this loan what the examiner will tell you is that part of the over interest was paid. see the loan interest paid see that one the 15 it goes under current liabilities so you pick all the free marks please before you confuse yourself and the post so let's go and the post those free marks so we've got loan then we've got deferred tax we've got the tax there and because there's a lease in the in, in 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 the trial balance we also include a lease here now this list is an kind of a bit what else do we have i'm going to leave a line or two lines and then you're going to jump to current liabilities then we begin to post to our current liabilities what do we have on the current liabilities here you can even close your eyes feel free here close your eyes and simply write payables because payables are always there 
what do you do? Tax. There's tax, and then there's deferred tax. So you have to know the difference. There's what we call tax, and uh, there's what we call deferred tax. So what else do you bring there? Uh, you can also bring the interest accrued. So accrued interest. Remember, from the 15% the they paid something, so we bring the accrued interest here. I'm going to show you how I'm bringing this one here. What else do you want to bring in here? Remember, there was a bank overdraft. So you bring a bank OD, the bank overdraft. What else do you bring in here? Um, remember, there's a lease. So a lease, current liability comes here for the lease. Then you're done. Now, this one is a working. Huh? For the lease, remember, this, is, this one is going to be a working. Uh, tax is going to be a free mark. This one is a working. Deferred tax is a working. And um, retained earnings, there's a serious working. These ones are free marks. These are the free marks. PPE is a working. Okay. So what do we do? Let's pick our free marks and post them here quickly. Let's start enjoying ourselves. So what do we do? I'm going to take you back to the question so that now we post the free marks. Now, look at the trial balance here, which something that I didn't have notes, just pick it. So let's pick our free marks. Maybe let's start with the income statement. What are we going to pick for the income statement first for now? Let's pick our, our free marks. Look at, at our current tax. Current tax, we've got note number four. This guy is a free mark, and this guy is a free mark. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to pick them now until we get there to the notes, because there might be something in the note that is going to dictate something. So before we do that, let me just pick the revenue figure. See that figure? This figure has got no note, the 980. So we pick that one. What other figure are we picking which has got no note? Yes, let's pick um, our admin expenses. See? There's no not, and here there's no not. So this, this one, no not. This one, no not. We pick it the way it is. So one, two, three. Okay, there we go. What else are we picking there? Okay, it seems there's nothing down. There's nothing down. We go to interest. Interest is a free mark. Also, we're going to just pick it the way it is. 15% loan note. So we're going to multiply 15% by 200, then we post it the way it is. So there we go. Let's go to our workings and then we post those figures so i suggest you get a screenshot so that uh, you should not be waiting for me to scroll up and down but you just be, be able to follow follow properly as i'm doing this so i'm taking you to the working okay so there we go so that's our sft so what do we do let's go our revenue figure you seem to open the brackets feel free these are free marks open the brackets and then write the 980, which we saw there in the trial balance. Why am I opening the brackets? Just in case there's something coming, but usually it's a free mark because it's been given to you at the date of the report. Cost of sales. Now the cost of sales has been given, there's no note. What was it? It was 480. Okay, just open brackets. In case of anything comes, you add GP, wait here. Other income, open brackets. Distribution has been given. There was no note. What do you do? Simply pick it and post it. How much was our distribution? Now, distribution, there's a note there. So just put the open balance for distribution, whatever it may be, put it here. Admin, also there is a note. So I just suggest that uh, for these ones, just put the open balances because something is coming up on these two. So let's, let's go. Let's just go and pick them the way they are and just put the open balances here. So we've got uh, admin, how much are admin? Admin, we've got a 124, distribution, we've got 124, admin, we've got 2 squeeze So what do we do? We say 2 squeeze plus 124. 124 and 2 squeeze we, we post them the way they are. So we go to admin, 124, 124 on distribution, and 2 squeeze on admin. These are free marks, we post them. So no, you know, finance costs, you have to calculate, there should be a working there. Tax, there should be a working there. Are you seeing? Okay. But for tax, it is easier to get the free marks. Just open the brackets there. And what do you do? Let me show you how you get the free marks here. Even finance cost, there's a free mark here. So on finance cost, what you do before you go anywhere, 
simply post that prima clear. They've told you that it is 15% loan notes. Have you seen? 15% loan notes. How much? 200. So what do you do here? Simply multiply 15%, 200 by 15%. Once you multiply 200 by 15%, how much are you getting? Let me just punch it quickly because of course I have to do it. So I'm going to say 200, 200 multiplied by 15%. Yes, there we go, we have 30. So what do you do? You simply get the 30 and post it. But yeah, so let me just also just write something here. Okay, so we, we multiply this, uh, this 200 by 15%, we get our set. This set goes straight to income statement. Then what do we do? We have tax. The current tax, current tax we have five. Simply take it straight to income statement. Uh, deferred tax asset we have eight. You see? Simply take it straight to income statement. Plus, what else do we have? Okay. Uh, something else is coming up in the notes. I'm going to explain something on desired tax here, why I'm just taking it straight to income statement. I'm going to explain as we go to the note because of the note, note number eight. But I assure you, simply pick this figure and add it to the tax income statement. I'm going to explain why we are doing that. So what do we do? We pick those figures. So there we go. We go to our income statement and then we post. These are such, such free marks in, uh, in, uh, in uh, published accounts. What do we do income? We have who? Set there, we simply get the, the finance cost, which is 30. So we simply got the 200 there, we multiplied it by 15%. And the total, the total we found out was how much it was the set. So this one, you can even add this to it. It's just bring, which is equal to 30. Now leave something, just in case there's something coming up from the lease or from somewhere else in the, in the question for interest. There we go. Profit after tax. What was the tax? We said get the five. The current tax, they would, you, you get it. Plus the deferred tax, eight, you put them there. You start waiting for addition or subtraction. I'm going to explain tax properly. You're going to understand it. Okay, so what do we do? Let's move on. You are getting free marks. Let's go to changes in equity. Remember what I mentioned? The trial balance date is equal to the reporting date. Which means that the closing, the balances given on the top balance are the, the final figures. So just pick them and paste them here. Let's go to share capital. We pick the figures that are there, share premium, reduce surplus, and DTC. So there we go. What do we have on our share capital? We have 100. We, we pick that 100 the way it is. We paste it there. Share premium 40, we paste it there. Now look at evaluation reserve. There's 15. You see, at the date of report, what do we do? We pick it the way it is, and then we're going to paste it there. But for the tenth earnings, look at the tenth earnings. Boom. There's a story there. There's a story. You see, the tenth earnings is appearing where? Is appearing on the debit side. You see, this is debit and this is credit. But earnings are supposed to be income. But see, it's on the debit side, which means that this guy is a loss. So it was a retained loss. You have to understand that, which means that your profits for a period are going to be affected. And now because of this loss, that is why we're having this guy here, the deferred tax asset. We are going to explain better. So that retained loss, we are going to put T as the opening balance on the retained earnings. It's just common sense. The closing balance will calculate in the income statement. So this one can't be a closing balance. The examiner won't tell you it was, it was opening balance. You just have to know. So here you have to think like a housewife, not like a side chick, because a side chick does not use common sense. So there we go. We have our share capital there. The figure was 200. We simply post it there. Share premium, we had 40. We post it there. Retain the loss, think like a housewife, use common sense, 190, it was a loss. You see, Reef surplus, the closing balance was 15, bring it there. The total here, we don't know because we are missing a figure here. Now this figure is coming from what? It's coming from the total net profit and uh, dividends payable and it is going to have a total figure here. So 
So they are going to be awaking here. Okay, we are posting free figures. So Robert, please pay attention here. What we are doing, we hope we are following. Hope you are following. Mr. Manga, I'm sorry, I'm in class. Let me just be able to call you in the next uh, 30 minutes. Sure. Okay, so there we go. That was our beloved uh, student, Mr. Mbanga. Such a wonderful student. Okay, so we go to the SFP, we post the free figures. PPE, there's a working. So current assets, inventories, receivables, and bank cash, these are free marks. Why? Because the draw balance date is equal to reporting date. So what do we do? We simply pick them and paste them. How on earth can you fail a published accounts question? Seriously, I really find it hard to believe. See, 52, you paste it the way it is. 62, 62, even though it's at the first May 2015. Open, this was the closing balance. You pick it the way it is. Okay. So we've got receivables and we've got uh, inventories. What else do we have? Bank. Now the bank that we have is an overdraft. It's a liability, the 18. So we are going to paste this one under non-current liabilities. So there you go. So you see that 18? So this 18 is a liability. It goes to current liabilities in the SFP. That's why that 18 is going. You see, this figure and this figure, they are going straight the way they are. Why? Because the reporting date and the trial balance date are the same. So these figures have been given to you at the date of report. And then there is no note attached. If there was a note attached, we would have told you to wait. But here, no note. Please see that. Just like the cost of sales, there was no note. Okay. Revenue, there was no note. This, no note. That one, no note. These are free marks, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. So let's go. 52, 62, and 18. Let's go and post these figures. Okay. So 18 is a bank overdraft. We simply post it already. We have 18, a bank overdraft. And then we have inventory. We open brackets. It's 52. Open brackets, 62. But for me, because I know the principles, I will simply bring the 52 and put it here. But for you, if you don't know the principles, you are not sure, you are not so strong in, in principles, open brackets, say in case something comes up, plus or minus, plus or minus. But for me, because I'm sure of the principles, I'll simply bring and put it here, total, 62, there, 52. I won't forget. Share capital, remember, these are free marks here. So what, what's happening is simply telling you, please, what you wrote in changes in equity, also come and copy here, we'll give you another five marks. See changes in equity? You've got 200, 40, and 15. Copy these guys. Copy these guys and paste them the way they are, including this guy. But unfortunately, this guy, we've not yet worked him out. So we wait. So we get the 200, 40, and 15. Why am I pasting those ones? I will repeat. It is because our SFP date and our trial balance date are the same. So that means the, 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 the figures given have been given to at the date of report. Here is a working, so we're going to open brackets, wait, and then you surplus, it was 15, the closing balance. So many free marks everywhere, these questions. Please know the principles. Look at uh, the loan note. The loan note is always a free mark. Simply copy it and paste it. That was how much? 200, bring it there. Then kind of ability. The fair tax is a working, this is a working. Payables, always a free mark. But for the purpose of this question, sometimes there is what they call uh, something was, re was retained to the, to, the, to the supplier. So you can simply open your brackets and put the figure for payables. What is the figure for payables? Well, the figure for payables has been given to us in the question. Trade payables. Where are you, Mr. Payables? Oh, Mr. Payable. We have a receivable. We have admin. Seriously? Mr. Payable didn't want us to find him. Okay, there we go. There we go. Seriously? Oh, payables. There. Good. We have our 32 there. You see? This figure has been given to you at the date of report. And there's no note attached. What do you do? It's a free mark. Please paste it. 
before you go to any notes. The thing is that some students are so good at rushing to the notes. Don't be so good at rushing to the notes. Bring the stage to here. Know how to extract free marks. So if you're not sure, what you can simply do, simply bring the stage to here. You wait in case something plus or minus come. But for me, because I'm sure I know the principles, I'm simply taking it directly from and add it there to avoid wasting time like we did there. So lots of free marks. So you see, what is our tax here? Even this tax here is going to be a free mark. Tax is always a free mark. We are going to explain why we, what we mean when we say it's always a free mark. So now that we've, we've augmented our free marks, now let's count our marks. See, if these are half marks, we say one, two, three. Uh, let's say if these are if these are our half marks, uh, let's say let's say half. You see, half. If the, if they are half marks, half, 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 half. How many marks we have? We've got this side, one, two, three, four marks to our sender. Let's go here. Okay, we've got it. half, 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 five marks and half. Okay, let's go. There, what do we have? You see, we have there our one, then we've got our half, our half, and uh, there we have our half. How many marks have we gotten so far? And this figure there, we have our half, and there, our half. Because they, I'm giving them half because there's no working attached. When you work out something, it can't be half. It can be one or two, usually one, one or two. But this is a nine marks question. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. But this one is a nine marks. So this can be one mark, one mark. So they are half marks, half marks. Okay. So count the marks now. Also add this one here. You see? So just for writing the format also, you can't get zero here. So I'm, going, I'm not going to give marks for the format, but I'll just give marks for the entries. Now let's see, we've got one, two, three, and a half, plus this one, four and a half. What do we do? Now, I'm, I'm simply assuming that uh, at, this, at this level, you've not done anything. This is where we say there are some students who get more marks than allocated marks. Why? Because they're going to do good work. The exam may not give you half marks on these ones. It may have a different set of giving you marks, but whatever the exam will give you, whether it is half or less than half, it will help you to pass the, the question with easy. So now let's go to the workings and now work them out. There are lots of easy marks in published accounts. You cannot fail an exam which has published accounts. So let's go to our workings. Remember we've got notes. They're not number three, not number something, but for me, I don't care because I am so good. I start with any note and I dismantle it as I go. So if you want in the exam, please feel free to start with the note that is easier for you. But for me, I'll start with any note because any note is easier for me. I know the principles. So let's go. There we go, we've got note number one, property plant and equipment. What, a, what, a, what an, easy no, an easy note, see? Buildings, deep has been given to you straight line, 5%. There, what do we have? 25%. There, 20% using balances. And then they've told you, Malawi PLC has not yet taken into account depreciation charge for the year to the May 2015 in arriving at the trial balance figures. So the figures in the trial balance, they've not yet charged depreciation. So you need to charge deep for the current year and use this percentage. 5% state line, 25% state line, this one, 20% reducing balance. Then what do you do when you work out the depreciation? Divide it. 40% should go to admin for the computers, and then the balance should go to distribution. So from the total dip, when you work it out on 20%, 40% goes to admin, 20% goes to distribution. 10% goes to admin under motor vehicles, balancing to distribution. And then under buildings, all the dip goes to admin. Seriously, these are easy marks. So let's work them out. Let's go to the figures in our SFP in our trial balance. So I'm hoping that you've, you've gotten uh, the, the screenshot. Let's go to our assets. There are those our assets. Land at valuation. So let me just work these ones out for you here quickly. Land at valuation. 
what have we been told? There we go. We've been told here, yeah, see the land? Land is 200. 200, 90, and 30. These are easy. Simply bring them the way they are. Simply say, PPE schedule. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me just delete the word schedule. That's not the correct spelling. Okay. So PPE schedule. So what do we do here? We have land. We have uh, buildings. We have motor vehicle. We have computer. We have a lease. So what do you do? You know, the building, uh, they've told you it was 200, the, co the cost. This one, it was 90. This one, it was 30. Uh, don't know, this one is, uh, there's a uh, land, building 200, land 40. Oh, sorry, land was 40. And then the building was 200. And then this other guy was how much? Was, uh, was 90. And then this one was set. Okay, let's, let's just go to the workings and then work them out from there. Let's make the, the format before we mess up the question paper. Okay, so working number one, PPE. Call it working number one. Say the PPE schedule. We have assets. So what do you do? We have land. We've got buildings. We've got motor vehicles, and then we've got a computer. Then we've got a lease. It's an asset, bring it. And then we have our total. The figure that goes to the SFP. So what do we do? The format for the PP should never changes. And this is the easiest one to pass. Simply bring the opening balance, opening balances, okay? Now for the PP, as you know, uh, when you bring the opening balances, ask yourself a question. Huh? There's something also that I like to bring in myself. When I bring the opening balance, I also I do accumulated depreciation, always remove. And then was there any disposal? Bring the disposal. If there was any disposal, remove the disposal. And then what do you do? Was there any additions? These are just common sense. I'm putting all these things just to show you how you can put it in the exam. But in this question, we don't even know if these things are there. So you just come and leave them blank. And then what else do we have? Then uh, we are going to have, um, we are going to have our closing balances. Oh yeah, we are going to have the, 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 the... remember, let me just do this. So that I, I show that something that is true. Let's say, we remove our accumulated we're not going to have with our CV. You see? When we remove our CV, was there any additions? We add there the additions. Any disposals? We add the disposals there. Then we do years what? Years charge. Something like that. So what was the opening bands for land? For land, we were told it was 40. For buildings, it was 200. For motor, it was 90. For computer, it was 30. For the lease, First, we don't know. We are going to the note because there's a note on the list. Any accumulated depreciation, you bring it here. You less. What are they seeing now? My figures up. Okay. Let's go. We'll bring the, the figures. These are extremely free figures. So we have for buildings, see the allowance for depreciation accumulated per first June 2014, opening balances for deep. We have 120 for building, 45 for motor, six for computer. What do we do? We copy those ones and paste them there. These are free marks. You can never fail a question for published accounts. So what do we have there? Uh, we have our 120. Oh, no, no, land is not depreciated, sorry. I put that on the wrong one. We have our 120. We have our 120, we have our 45, we have our six. Okay. When we less, our CV there is, there it is 240, here we've got 80. Here, what do we have? We have 45, that's our CV. What do we have here? Here we have 24. Those are our CVs. You see? Maybe let's, let's add more values, let's say we put them in red. 
to distinguish them from the rest. Then uh, we have 80, and then we have uh, 40. Okay. Okay, was there any addition during the year? There were no additions during the year. There were no disposals during the year. So the year's charge, I'm doing this because I'm sure there wasn't. If you're not sure, go to the notes and read the notes. If there was no disposal, then we'll and good, you move on. But why am I saying there were no additions? Because the note that relates to this one tells us this. It does not indicate anything to do with any, any addition or any disposal. We are simply told, see, note number one. We are told those things. So what do we do? We apply the, 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 the dip for the year. What was the dip for the year? 5% state land admin, 25% and 20%. Remember 40% ad, uh, admin or 10% admin, 40% admin. For motor, 10% admin. For computer, 40% admin. The balancing distribution. It's important to remember that. So let's go and calculate our dip. Please take a screenshot for that one so that we don't waste time. What do we do? We go there. We add our ES charge. Now remember our ES charge? So our ES charge percentage, we've been told here, we have a land, there's no dip. There on, um, on, uh, on buildings, on, uh, on, on buildings, we have 5% charge there. 5% charge. On, la on motor, we have uh, 20, what's our charge, the 25% charge? And then here we have our 20% charge. So what do we do when we multiply? So we are going to say the dip. So the dip now for the year is going to be something like that. What is our figure for the year? When we multiply, since it is straight liner for buildings, so we are doing 5% on that figure. When you do 5% on that figure, what is 5% on the cost? Straight line means go and charge deep on the cost, the actual cost, which was 200. 5% 5 of 200, that is uh, 10. So we've got the charge for the year is 10. Here, it is 25% also straight line. What do we do? It is going to charge on the original cost the 90 there. Straight line. 25% of 90 is how much? 22.5, boom, you have your 22.5. There, we've been taught 20% reducing balance, meaning after we remove accumulated depreciation, this guy, what remains, this is the balance they are talking about. So we charge 20% on the balance. So what is 20% of 24? When you multiply there, you should be able to get 19.2. These are such easy marks. Now remember, these figures, they are reducing your CV. Deep is reducing your CVs. Are you seeing? So those are your CVs. So what do you do? You say land has got no deep as usual. It is still 40. Oh, no, 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 no. Not there. Oh, what's going on, Mr. Sambo? Mr. Sambo, come on, come on. Okay. There, land has got new. So what do we do now? There we go, we make our figures, okay. There we have land, comes to 40. This one, when we less, now we are removing from the CV, 80, we remove the year's charge, which is the 10. You see, what do we have? We have 70. Remember, 22.5, we remove from 45. What do we have there? We are going to have something called 22.5, half of that. 19.2, we remove from the 24. No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. I swapped the figures there. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, I wish somebody was there to help me. 20% 20 of 24 is not 19.2. 20% of 24 is actually 4.8. Yes. Then when we remove that figure, this 4.8 from 24, we have 19.2, yes, that's the correct one. So now those are NBVs, NBVs, net book value. So what is missing here, we're missing the lease amount. You see, we are missing the lease. So we are going to have a total somewhere here, which will go to the SFP, 
SFP. Okay, so when we work out the list, we're simply going to add it here and bring the total there. So let's go to the list and work it out now before it is too early. Okay, so let's say working number two, working number two, we say list. Okay, now remember the list has been revised. Huh? For now, it is I, I free 16. And if you want to know more about IFRS 16, tomorrow I'll be at the radio show, Man FM Radio. I'll be doing a, a show on leases. So if you want to know more on leases, please tune in tomorrow at 11.30. Every Tuesday, 11.30 hours, Central African time, Zambia, we, I have shows on the radio. So tomorrow I have a show on the radio station. You can tune in at 3.7 FM. Okay, so where is the list? Let's go to our balance and find out the list. There's a note. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's go to our notes. Okay. When we find the list, we'll go back. Let's go to note number two. What does note number two say? Note number two, yes, note number two says, Malau PLC list motor vehicle on 31st May 2015. You see, there's a reason why I emphasize that if you can't see dates in financial reporting, you should not write the exam because you waste money. Dates are important because they help you to see what is actually happening. So this one, I'm going to, we are going to work it out right here. From Bana Bank for a period of four years, okay? There's a reason why they said four years for depreciation purposes. This was equal to its use of economic life. The motor vehicle had a cash price of 60 million, okay? At the first May 2015. Malawi is required to pay an annual rent of 19 million every 31st May. Are you seeing? Every 31st May. No, no, here's the point I want to make. He's supposed to pay 19 million now. Huh? This 19 million is supposed to pay it when? Every 31st May. Starting when? Starting, a very important statement, starting on 31st May 2016. Now, when is he reporting? is reporting when in 2015. But when is he going to pay the lease? He's going to pay the lease in 2016. But he's reporting in 2015, meaning that this one is a free mark. You're not going to sweat here. Why? Because this guy is not paying in this. So how do you calculate it? Let's do it this way. Working should be something like this. Here, what you do, you simply say, yeah, that's the format. Yeah. Now, when is he paying? Since he's paying in arrears, you have, you have the cash payment, and then you've got the interest because he's paying in arrears, meaning that he's going to pay the lease after he has enjoyed interest. At the end of the year, that's when he's going to pay. After interest has been enjoyed. Okay. What else do we do? We are going to bring in the subtotal here. So the subtotal, you bring it there. What else do you have? You're going to now the rental. The least rental payment, okay, whatever it is, yes. And then you've got the total liability, which is going to be the non current liability in this case. So year one, the lease is worth 60 million. You see that figure there? You just take it there. Boom. What is the interest at implicit? We've been told interest is 10%. Okay, so the interest is 10%. Okay, what is 10% of 60 is 6,000? You do it there. So you add this guy plus that guy because he's paying at the end of the year when he has accrued interest already, meaning you add the subtotal 66,000. Okay, when he pays rent of 19,000, you remove from the total, subtotal liability. So the liability has, has now reduced to what? To 47,000. Now remember, this 47,000, because it's paying in arrears, is what we are going to call our non current liability. It's going to be payable in a period of over one year. Are you seeing? Okay. What is our interest? You see this figure is our interest there. Is our finance cost there. Now look at this figure. This figure is our current liability. You see? current liability, but that is not true. You see why? Because the rules say that this man is supposed to pay how much? He's supposed to pay 19 million every 31st May, starting 31st May 2016, starting next year. So if this is 2015, 
then next will be 2016, which means that next year is going to make that payment. What is going to be his current bit? He's going to pay the payment at the end of the year when he has already accrued interest. Now remember, this 19 million contains 10% inside. Are you seeing? So remember to remove the interest from the rental amount because you've already charged interest here. 10%, 6, to make it 66,000. Are you seeing? So what do you do to get a counter bit? Say, open bracket, you say 19,000 minus 6,000, which is going to be equal to 13,000. That is your current liability in the SFP. That's how you work it out. Because it's paying in arrears. If it was paying in advance, it was not going to be like this. It was going to be different. If you want to know more about that one, you can give me a call or you can simply comment and then we'll be able to, to help you. But I want to mention that uh, on the list, the list has been revised. There's a new standard called IFRIS 16. I'll be discussing this standard tomorrow at 11.30 at Mane FM Radio. Mane FM Radio 93.7 FM. So you can tune in tomorrow at 11.30. 30 hours. That is Central African time. Okay. You can turn into one. So there we go. So let's pick our figure. Now, see, here we have four years. The four years whose life of this asset is there to help us with deep. So our deep figure. Now, remember, if we charge deep in the current year, it won't go anywhere. Why? Because we're not paying this list up until next year. So the only figure we're going to in the SFP, we're going to show the 47 and the 19. For next year, why? Oh, we're going to the 37 and the 13 because interest we've already removed it. So we're going to show only two figures because it's paying next year. So we're going to show this guy and that guy only two figures. The rest we don't show. So let's go to our SFP and the post. Let's go to our SFP. So there we go. Yeah, our list working has been worked, worked on already. As you see, we've got year one, we've got our cash, and then uh, I mean, let's just save the time. We've worked it out already, working number two. Let's just go straight to our SFP there. Okay, there we go. So we've got list working number two there. It was how much the current liability Remember, it was 19 minus 13 minus 6, which left us with, with 13. Okay. Then, uh, under the current liabilities, the list, there was a working there, which is simply 47. You see? Okay. There we go. Not number two has been done. Let's go back to the question to the working. Do not fail this because of failing to ask for help. We are here to help you. Please call us. We'll be happy to help you. There we go. There we go. Not number three, we are saying Malawi PLC as a policy. Now, now remember, before I go this one, let's deal with the list once and for all. So let's go back first and uh, post Kudaku changes it to PPE working. That working, there we go. So the lease was how much? The lease was 60 million. You remember the 60,000? And then, because we are paying next year, this year not depreciating anything. So the total amount for the lease still stands at 60. You see? So when you add 60 plus 100 plus 40, if you add, say, 60 plus 40, you have 100. Plus 70, you have 170. 170 plus uh, 19, you have 192.2. 192.2 plus uh, 10, you have 102.2. 102.2 plus uh, 12.5, you have, uh, oh, how much is that? Let me just work it out anyway. I've got to be the one to work it out. You, when you had that one, yes, you're going to have uh, 200. Uh, let me just use the calculator anyway. 
to avoid wasting time but uh, okay yes there we go when we add that one uh, we are going to have 211 700 that figure is what's going to our SFP P P E total don't be so obsessed in the exam for totaling things huh? here some of you are so obsessed with totaling things don't get marks for totaling things the one important figure you need is this one, which you can still get by adding in this in this way. Which you can still get 211,600, 211,700, that's the figure. So what do you do? You even transport it to the PPE. PPE, there's a working, what do you say? 211,700, working number one. You even indicate to show the examiner that you know what you're doing. So that in case they don't agree with this figure, they can go back and check your working and they give you marks from there. Okay. Anything else? Yes, there is something else. We are moving on. Remember, we are moving. Let's go back to note number four. Note number four is about tax. Another free mark. Oh, I just love tax. Tax is such an easy working. They've told you here, the tax figure in the trial balance represents an under or over provision. So here, yeah, the examiner wants you to use the principles to know that it's an under over. So if it's on the debit side, then you know it's under. If, if it's on the credit side, then you know it's over. That's how you know. Easy as that. So the directors of Marao have estimated an income tax of 14 million. Oh, 14 million? This figure is a free mark. Take it straight to current liabilities in the SFP. It's a free mark. What else have you been doing? The deferred tax asset in the trial balance represents the figure at 31st May 2015, okay? The figure at 31st May 2015 is a deferred tax liability of 20. Even this guy, 12 million, is a free mark. Why do you say a free mark? It was given to at the date of when? The date of report. That was the tax liability. So this one also goes to non-current liabilities in the SFP. Free marks. If you know the principles, you know the debts. Financial reporting is a hawk. Mumu follow, not in the park, because in the park there could be snakes. It's just a hawk, mumu follow. Come follow, I can know, not each kuru. I love published accounts, I'm telling you. Come, we help you. Don't waste time. Don't fail. So we are going to bring tax there. It's tax. 14 million, we simply bring it there. Deferred tax, the 12 million. Now, see, the, def the deferred tax figure, how uh, we are going to, to bring it in there. We've been told that obligation for deferred tax uh, is, a, is a 12 million. So free mark also, where is it? Uh, okay, 12 million, yeah, there. You pick it, so if you know the principles, there are lot of, lots of free marks. So there we go. At this time, you are even relaxed. You are feeling like a married man. Not just any married man, of course. A happily married man. <laughs> Some married men are so sad. Some married men are so sad. Okay, so there we go. So that's our figure there. Free mark. Okay, what else do we do? We've been told something. Huh? Let's go to the income statement and find out under or over. Now remember, what you can do, this figure also goes to the income statement also. The 12 million is a free mark also in the income statement. What do you do? Simply post it in the income statement. Because it's a liability you're supposed to pay. And the accrual concept says recognize liabilities in the year when they are accrued. So go there, remember tax. Why is our tax in the income statement? You simply go and post it there. It is also a free mark there. Okay, income statement, you've got tax. Five plus eight. These markings I was just putting to just show how many free marks are there. But maybe the examiner could give you even more marks than this or even less marks than this. Okay, so let's go. Tax was also say plus 12. You see? And then the current tax was how much? Was 14 estimated. That's how easy it is to work out tax. Remember, this was an under provision, the five, we add it back. This 12 was a deferred tax liability. We add it, we add it here. And then the 14 was the estimated. We'll bring it here. What about the eight? 
the eight was the deferred tax asset. You see? Now, a deferred tax asset, I want to say something here. It's a tax which comes as a result of a lot of reasons, but the most common reason is because of a loss. When you make a loss in the current year, that means you are going, you, 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 if, you, if you estimate tax, you know, those who've done taxation are going to agree with me. You make assessments on your own, and then you tell us that I know I'm going to make a profit of 100,000. So they charge you tax, maybe your tax is 10% or 3% or whatever it is. And it happened that during the year you make 60,000, which means you've overpaid tax to the dollar A because you paid on what? On 100,000. So what do you do? You're going to make a provision called deferred tax. The tax that you are likely to recover. Are you seeing? In the future. Are you seeing? So for the current year, we are simply going to account for it the way it is because we don't want to assume that we've recovered this tax when we've not recovered it. So we're simply going to add it as part of the tax we're supposed to pay. And then in the future, if we recover, then we're going to do a reverse. That is the simplest explanation I can give you as a layman for you to just get it. You've not yet recovered this deferred tax asset. It's coming in the future deferred tax asset. So in this year, account for it as if the way it is. But if you want to know more details about taxation, you can come and in law with us and as we will take you through other questions, then we'll be happy. So when you add, let me just say, let me just uh, go back here. When you add those, that means the tax comes to how much? Your tax comes to this guy plus this guy is, is 20. This guy plus this guy is 19, which gives you 39,000 tax. The other alternative for tax could have been something like this. Let me show a working here. There we go. Let's do a working for tax. Let's do a working so that I show you the other alternative how you could have done it. Remember, but estimated is how much is 14. And then deferred tax liability at the date of close is 12. Okay, let's go to the total balance figure and see the opening tax. The opening tax, uh, we've been told there, the opening tax is a uh, deferred tax opening is four, is eight, and then current tax opening is five. Now remember the current tax is on the debit side. It was an under provision. Are you seeing? It can't be an expense, as you know, the under provided. So what do we do? We are going to less it, we are going to add it back to increase the liability, okay. Pray, I've not swapped. I've not swapped. Yes, I'm okay. We are going to increase the bits. Okay, so what do we do? So let's go. We have 8, 5, 12, and uh, 14. Now let's do that simple working for tax that you can work out in the exam. So let's say working number three, we have the tax. Is it working number three? Oh, oh, yeah. Working, okay. So Oh, there's, there's actually some space here working number three, which is our tax. Now remember this estimated. So estimated tax, boom, you have 14,000. Okay, then you've got an under provision of how much? Boom, 5,000. When you add the two, you have 19,000. Then you've got it. Opening deferred tax, how much was it? It was 80,000. Then you've got closing deferred tax of how much? Of 12,000. So what do we do? We add the two. We are going to have a figure here, which are going to call 20,000. And then when we add this guy plus that guy, we have 89,000. Remember, we are not lessing the deferred tax assets because we, are, we, we may recover this amount in the future, not now, you see? So if, if, if we reduce it from the liability, we are going to overstate our profits. Our profits are going to be overstated. In the end, shareholders are going to expect to receive more dividends from us and we fail to pay them. Why? Because we 
overstated our profits. So please don't lace it to avoid overstating your profits. So that's how you do it. And then this question is even almost done. So there we go. Let's go to another note and see if there's something special. Okay. Let's go. What else do we have? What else do we have? Note number two is done. Number three is done. Oh, note number four, land. Land, see? Note number three, this land. We've been told, Marawa POC has a pulse of revived land, revolving land every year on 31st May. Every year on 31st May. Now, on 31st May 2015, land was revived to 40 million. When this carding value was 8 million. You see? So there's a gain here of how much? Of 10 million to other compressible income. Are you seeing? There's a gain of 10 million, which are going to show in other comprehensive income. So what do you do here? Now, look at it this way. Uh, let's go and post that gain first in other comprehensive income, 10 million. So the 10 million goes to other comprehensive income. And also it's going to show in the change, statement of changes in equity. So let's go to other comprehensive income and post that gain. So there we go. Other compressive income. Okay, there we go. So how much the other compressive income we have again? Huh? So again on land. How much? Ten. Are you seeing? Ten. So we're going to have this figure plus the net to have what you're going to call total compressive income somewhere here. Which are going to take to statement of changes in equity. Okay, now that 10 there helps us to nail the changes in equity. Remember, the closing balance for changes in equity have been told that on, on, on version surplus was 15. Have you seen? It was 15. You see? It was 15. Here we have 40, and it was 15, meaning that during the year, an addition was how much? An addition of the gain was how much? Was it 10? So if the gain was 10 during the year from land, as you can see, the gain was 10 during the year, which means that um, the opening balance was five. This 10 minus the 15, you get the five, the opening balance. Easy as drinking water. The additional uh, evaluation was 10, the difference, the gain was 10. So simply move from the closing balance, which was given to in the SFP at the date of close, leaving the total balance. The 15, you remove the 10 of the 5, the, the opening balance. Okay, there we go. That's how you deal with that. Changes in equity is a free mark. Robert Ngoma, we hope that you are following. You are the student that requested this question, and we are happy to deliver it so that even others can benefit. Okay, so there we go. What, what, what is the other note? Note number 5. Okay. Malawi issued 20 million equity shares on 1st March 2015 at a price of 140 each. This price was equal to the market value of Malawi, of uh, price of Malawi's equity share at the date. See, issued shares at how much? At 140. Now, I want to tell you something. Whenever you see the shares were issued, simply run quickly and check out the par value of the shares in the trial balance. So what was the par value? The shares for Malawi POS were one quarter each. Are you seeing? Meaning that if you issues 20 shares, one quarter is going to go to the share capital straight. So let's go. He issued 20 million, 20,000 shares at how much? At 1.4. You see? He issued 20,000 shares at 1.4. So we have two things happening here. The, the one quarter, the 20,000 at one quarter we take to the, to the share capital, and then the, one point, the 0 0.4 goes to the share premium. So the premium is just a 0 point for the additional amount is gaining. Because this original price is one quarter, but it's selling at 1.4, meaning the additional is just, let's, let's just show you quickly, because sometimes, you know, writing makes more sense. Issue how many shares? Issue 20,000 shares. Those 20 million shares. So what do we do? We simply say, 20 million 
we multiply by one, which is equal to 20 million. This one goes straight to share capital. And then we also said 20 million again, multiply by the, the 0 0.4. You see that 0 0.4, which is when you multiply, it's going to give you 8 million. This one goes to share premium. As easy as that. The power value is one quarter, he sells at one point, for meaning he's benefiting a 40 per model. So to avoid confusing yourself, simply multiply the power value by the number of shares, one quarter by 20 million, Masanga, and 20. I'll cut difference by the number of shares again, Masanga. Even go to post. Don't waste time in the exam, crying, even coding people that is a team nove. So you have to find the strategy in the exam for you to pass. Don't just go to people who are going to squander your money. Come to people who know what they are doing. So there we go, shares. Additions during the year, yes, we have. Share capital, 20 million was added during the year. Have you seen? Okay. What else do we have? Share premium, 8 million was added during the year. Now remember, 80 from 40. If they, during the year they, they made 8, then they ended with 40. That means they opened with how much? They opened with 32 as the opening balance. 40, that guy from 40. And if they had added on share capital 20 million during the year, and then they closed with how much? With 200. 200 minus 20, meaning during the year, opening balance was how much? Was it 180? Is, is it true that share capital is, is 200? I'm getting a feeling that uh, there must be something fishy. Let's check it out. What was the share capital figure? Was it 200? Oh, there we go, it was 100. There, there we go. Yes, that's 100. Okay, so it's not 200. Okay, so let's go. So that means we have to change a figure, okay? That one there, okay. And that one goes. So that means we are going to remain with 800 here. So when we less 100 from 20 from 100, we have our 80 there. So they opened with eight. Your figures are even adding up. So now the only thing remaining uh, is inequity is simply the total compressive income. Net profit plus other compressive income. You bring there. So you see. Remember the retained loss? They opened with 90, 190 retained loss. Okay, so what do we do? Now we go to another note. At this point, you are even happy, even relaxed, you're not panicking. So what do you do? You, you call, you go to other notes and check them out if there's anything new. Okay, this one has been dealt with note number five. We've done that one already. So let's go. The share issue, equity shares has been collected, accounted for in the books of Malawi. Yes, we know because the date of report and the trial bank date they match. No dividends were paid during the year. So money changes in equity current card dividends. See? leave it blank because nothing was paid during the year. So you are fortunate. So meaning that your profits are not going to reduce. If the dividends were paid during the year, you are going to reduce your retained earnings by the amount of dividends paid. Let's go to note number seven. Malaw issued 15% loan notes on 1st January 1996. Now, it is required to pay total annual interest twice a year on 30th November and 31st May. The interest payment due on 31st May 2015 was paid on the 5th of June 2015. We don't care. You see, the examiner is telling you, you know, I don't know why this, these examiners think like um, students are blind. You know, it is easier for you to fail this working if you don't know the principle. The principle is called the accruals concept. The principle is called the accruals concept. The accruals concept says that you recognize revenues and expenses in the period when they are incurred or when they occur. So this 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 amount of this uh, this, this uh, interest is being incurred when in the current year. So whether they pay it next year, whether they pay it the following year, 
us are going to recognize the payment in the year when it has been accrued. So see, the interest payment due on the first May 2015 was paid on 5th June 2015. So it was due on the 31st of May, but it was paid when? In the following month on the 5th of May. We don't care. Accrual's concept is going to apply. So what do we do? 15% multiplied by the loan note. Now I see, let's go to the working there. Okay, okay, there we go. 15% of 200, 15% of 200, we found that it was how much? It was, uh, let's multiply, let's work it out. That one multiplied by 15% is going to be 30. Now this 30, all of it goes to the income statement and we've done that already. But what happens? Loan interest paid was 15. So it doesn't matter whether they paid something. In the income statement, we show the full amount because it was accrued during the current year. We show the full amount, but this 15, which was paid, is going to reduce what? The liability of set, meaning that we have a balance of how much? Of 15 to pay. That means this balance of 15 is going to be as an accrue in the SFP current liability. So under current liability, we're going to show a 15, 15, 15 uh, million interest, whatever is 1,000. Because the total is supposed to be 30, but they paid 15, and now we are going to reduce 50, what they paid from the total to remain with this 15. But in the income statement, we don't care. Across concepts, we recognize all the expenses and the revenues when they occur. So we're going to recognize the whole set in the income statement. That's what we did. So let's go. Let's go and put that 15 interest in the SFP. There we go. You know what? I feel good about this working. So there we go. Our interest, accrued interest is 15. We put it there to show that we are still owing. Instead of paying 30, we paid 15 of a balance of 15. Okay. Okay. So what else is remaining? It looks like uh, the question is done. Oh, retained earnings. Retained earnings is not yet done. So what's going to help us to be done with retained earnings? Remember, there was a working on the PPE schedule, which we are still dealing with. Okay, there we go. So that's our PPE schedule. Now remember, when we worked out these, uh, these percentages here, we were told something here. Now let me just uh, be able to take you back to the question and show what we are told. We are told something, so I'm just going to rub this column here so that I can use it for my workings. Okay, so let's go to the note and see what we are told there. We are told something rather interesting. We are told that I note number two that um, depreciation, uh, note number one, yes, that 25% of deep, 10% goes to admin. 40% goes to admin. Look at motor vehicles. 25%, 10% to admin, balance to distribution. You see? Computer, 20% using balance. 40% goes to admin, balance goes to distribution. Buildings, 5% goes to admin, all of it. So what do we do? We simply go there and apply these rates. So how do we do it? Usually, I don't know why we didn't do that first. Maybe you were overwhelmed with the free marks. Okay, so there we go. So we have admin we have admin uh, the space is a bit uh, lower so i'm just going to do something like that so i work it out for me so we've got um we've got land we've got buildings we've got um motor we've got computer okay maybe let, let, let's just go on a on different page just to be to be clear so that in case you are following don't make mistakes okay so let's go so we've got um we've got land we've got uh, buildings we've got motor we've got computer and then what do we have nothing else yes so we have up uh, admin and then we've got distribution. So we've been told what was the trial balance figure for these ones, the trial balance figure. So the trial balance figures for admin and distribution, we worked them out already. There we go. See? 
they are uh, admin we had the two sixty distribution we had one twenty four so let's go one twenty four and two sixty so we have our balance uh, two sixty then one twenty four okay so land no deep no deep buildings five percent straight line see five percent of building state line what was it the five percent it was 10. see that 10. now we've been told that 40 it, all of it goes to distribution or all, all of it goes to admin so what do we do we take the 10 to admin we add it there on buildings 10 there nothing okay motor vehicle what were we told motor vehicle worked it out already what was it 25 percent 25 percent is here 22.5 40 percent goes to uh, 10 percent goes to admin the balance goes to distribution so what do we do 22.5 multiplied by 40 percent so 22.5 when you multiply by 40 percent how much are you getting 22.5 multiplied by 40 percent you are going to get um, so in other words, what you could have done, you could have simply said that the buildings were 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 two hundred. We multiply by five percent, and then we multiply by uh, yeah by five percent. All of it goes here. Then the motor vehicle, the motor is a uh, is ninety. We multiply by by twenty five percent, and then we multiply by by ten percent. The balance goes to this one. So what is the figure there? I hope I've not I've not swapped these things here. Let's just check them out quickly before we go. Okay, there we go. Yes, for twenty five percent, ten percent to admin. Then the other one here is twenty percent and forty percent to admin. Okay, ten and 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 forty. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what do we do? There we go. Okay. 10% for of, of, of 22.5, 10% of 22.5 goes to admin. So when you multiply 10% of that figure, you are going to have uh, something called 22% uh, uh, of that figure, you are going to have uh, something called 2.25. So you have 2.25 and then the balance comes there which is simply 20, uh, which is simply when you list the 2.25 from the 22.5, you're going to have something called the 20.25, 20.25. Here, 40% comes in, quad mean the balance goes to distribution. So 40% of how much? 40% of 4.8, 4.8, this figure there. 40% of that goes to, to add me. So this is 40% of 4.8. So 40% of 4.8, well, as we've been told, is supposed to be uh, 1.92. So we have 1.92. And then uh, when you, you remove from that one, you're going to have uh, the balance is going to be the balance is going to be 2.88. Okay, so now the total is there. How much do you have? Well, the total is here. There you go. When you add this plus this plus this plus that, what do you have? You have about um, 274, 170. Then when you add this plus that, you are going to have something called uh, 147, 130. Okay, there we go. So that means now we've worked out our admin and our distribution. To state 2.25, 1.92, 2 and then there are 20.25 uh, and then 2.88. So what do you do? You pick these figures straight, income statement, income statement. 
mwana mukabilinishi na mwana kwesheni ya tashani na kwesheni kwa mana so we pick those figures remember 274.70 what do you do you bring them with the income statement so what do you do here remember we said open brackets on the on the on the distribution so you could have added those things plus 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 so the total is there 274 no 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 admin or oh, plus 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 admin we have got it to what do we have oh i'm writing on the wrong way okay it's supposed to come somewhere there so let's say we'll move this this one here oh yeah i was going to be surprised so what do we have there so we have our admin we have our 274170 and then we are going to have our 1 uh, our 147 147 we are going to have our 147130 remember cost of sales was 480 revenue was 980 when you less we add our gp of how much our gp of 500 you see now that 500000 there remember uh, let me just say these ones are zeros these ones are zeros the 480 and the this is these are thousands for eighty thousand, that of forty thousand, yeah. These are and eight thousand. You have those ones. So when you list this guy, you list that guy. So you're going to have profit before tax, whatever fee that may come. No, no, no. You've got interest there of thirty thousand. You also bring it there. Uh, interest thirty thousand. You remove it. Then you have profit before tax of how much? Profit before tax of um, whatever that figure may be. Anyway, for the purpose of this, uh, let me just work it out. We have a uh, profit before tax of 48,700. 48,700. And then when you less the 39 for taxation, you're going to have your net of how much? Of 9,700. 9,000. 700 that is your net your net profit and then you are going to add your 10 remember your 10,000 this one it was again so you're going to this guy plus that guy of total compressive income so total compressive income of how much of 19,700 goes to other compressive income that means you are done so here your profit now your other compressive income they are straight at the end earnings 19,700. Now, remember, this guy is a loss, they came with a loss, which means that uh, they're going to close with a loss. This guy, the difference between that guy and that guy 190 and 197. So, they're going to have two figures, they're going to have a figure called 180 300. 180 300. That one is a loss, so that's the loss that they are going to cross with and what do you do you take this guy in the sfp have you seen under equity section so why what do we go we go to our sfp there we go we tend to where there was going to be working the 180 300 comes there that means the equation is done now everything is there everything is there so that's how you work out this question. Let's just check out in case there's something that you've left out. Okay, in case there's something that you've left out. Uh, there's no note, no other note. Okay, not number seven has been dealt with. Okay, okay, okay. Anything, everything is uh is okay. This one was just there to just disturb you. Don't pay attention to that. So that's how you work out the questions in the group under uh, published account. So you can you can, you have two things that you can do in this in this in this in this position. 
you can either pretend that you did not watch this video and say nothing about it, or you can be honest and give us a comment about how you feel and how you for this video so that we can either be able to assist you with more questions next time. So please feel free to share this video with your friends and um, also invite others to like our page so that they too can benefit. So remember, as I mentioned, this question was done on the request from uh, one student and that student, as we mentioned, is called uh, Robert Ngoma. So Robert Ngoma requested that we do this question for him. And I mentioned that uh, I was going to tag him so that he can be able to see that his request has been attended to. So Robert Ngoma, we hope that uh, you've benefited from uh, this question. And uh, we hope that now your, way, your, your questions are now to answer changes in equity, income statement, and uh, the others have been, have been tackled. So the other thing that I want to mention that tomorrow, tomorrow at 11.30 hours, Tuesday, tomorrow is Tuesday, Tuesday at 11.30, every Tuesday at 11.30, we have, um, I have radio session, so I'm going to go tomorrow at 11.30, hours i'll be doing the new standard i freeze 16 at money fm radio please feel free to tune in this is 93.7 fm you should be able to call in and ask questions we want to explain the questions regarding the new i freeze 16 the leases my name is shadrick Shadrick Lusambo. And uh, you can call me at uh, 0953979798. Or simply call this other number 0973333098. This number is on WhatsApp. So if you want to WhatsApp us, you can WhatsApp us for more. Please do not fail financial reporting. Feel free to come to us. We will be happy. We'll be more than happy actually to be able to help you. As I mentioned, if you have a question or any clarification that you need, please feel free so we are to with that. contact us and we'll be happy to respond to your needs. Like we've responded to our dear friend here who is a lover of our page, Robert Bruce Ngulube. Robert Bruce Ngurube. So please say thank you. Those who know Robert Bruce Ngurube for this request. Uh, his name is Robert Bruce Ngurube, the one that requested for this question. Please say thank you to this gentleman. And also thank you so much for liking our page and share this video. Please keep on sharing our videos. Thank you so much for joining me this, uh, this evening. And um, I will see you on the other side. So soon we'll post a question also on advanced financial reporting. A lovely evening and bye-bye.